Hello there and welcome. We've got another FileMaker video that we're going to be talking about some FileMaker stuff. My name is Matt Petrowski. I'm bringing you these videos. I'm the editor over at FileMakerMagazine.com and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the on object save. Not necessarily data structure, but definitely fits into our database. So hang with me and we'll be on my desktop in just a few. All right, so we are back at it again. We are going to be taking a look at putting more into our FileMaker database and learning more about FileMaker in the process. Let me check over to the side here, make sure the stream's running good. It is, and audio is coming through great. We are good to go. All right, if you would like to follow along in this video, or if you're coming in via a search or some other method that you found this video and you wanna start all the way back at video number one or two or three or whatever, wherever you wanna start, click on the channel icon and that will take you to my channel and you will see all of the different playlists where you can find these in order or in sequence, I should say. Otherwise, there's always something in every video to learn, and in this one, no different, we are going to be taking a look at the on object save trigger. Now, in the description on this video, if you're watching this live or after the fact, you're going to find a link to a file that you can download. It's a FileMaker file, and you should be able to open it with pretty much any version. I'm using FileMaker 16, but most of what we talk about here on these videos applies to most versions of FileMaker starting with FileMaker 12. There's just specific features and if they don't show up for you, it may be because you don't have that version. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got. The database that I've given you access to in the description there is called TimeTrack. It's a mess of a database right now and I have really cool stuff coming up for you with regards to the user interface, but up to this point, we've been talking about the data structure. And right now, as it stands, we've got a mess of a project because we've got, you can see right here, we've got two different implementations of the projects button. We've got a load button here, and we've got a load button here. Now, if you haven't watched these previous videos, when I go into layout mode here, and I double click on this load button to look at the uh, button setup, we can see that this one is performing the script of a load. Now, this was a video where I was trying to show how to wire up using a go to related but we found out that we need a record filemaker can't go to related records if there's nothing on both sides of the relationship in fact we have the exact same problem with our projects here and we've got some decisions to make with regards to how we're going to uh, move forward what are we going to use when we implement this and we'll go over a little bit of review in this regard but here what we've got is this load script. Let's take a look at this really quickly. When we click on the little icon there in order to choose a script, if you didn't know, this is possible to select right here and choose edit and not have to go into the script workspace in order to see what a script uh, will do. So in this one, we have a very simple setup. We're setting on our error capture. That's just in case no records are found. Then we set a variable, and we're doing this just so that we can see what we might be looking for because the perform find restore is not a very descriptive script step in that it doesn't tell us what we are looking for currently. It just says perform the find and restore. Well, what were we looking for? Well, if we put this variable up the top, we know that we're looking for the search criteria and that's probably what the perform find restore is using. Over here, likewise, we have this button, this load, and when we look at this, this is using a single step and it is using the go to related record. Now I will say, as I go into the defined database, when we were taking a look at this, we set up these two different methods and it works out that we get to choose what we want to leave in this database. In this case, this load, when we want to use a go-to related to load a found set, we're using a relationship for the purpose of filtering the data. That particular filter, that go to related, is using this one, this table occurrence right here, where we're going from here to here to here, and it's the selected project 
that is a global field within a globals table that we took out of our primary table. Now the whole goal with that, you can see right here in fact that I have this table ID. Typically the goal of creating a globals table, if you missed this lesson in the uh, previous lessons, is to try to keep our data tables as clean as possible and only have data within those. And FileMaker happens to be, I call it a big ball of wax or a mess of spaghetti where everything is commingled. Your user interface is commingled with your data structure, which is commingled with your application logic. And really you have to manage those things. In fact, there was a comment on YouTube here with regards to, it seems like you're always trying to um, keep things at a manageable level. And that is, in my opinion, one of your primary objectives with FileMaker. So we're going to take off this load button. We're going to start to clean up our user interface and we're not going to use this load button because that's an extra step that the user would have to make. The step being, if I'm looking at my, in browse mode and I make a selection, I believe Project 7 has some items and I click load. That does load my project seven. Let's see if I go project four and click load right there. Okay, nothing loads. So project seven in my database is the uh, project that has the records. The easier thing for the user is to simply select one of these items and have it load some records. So that's what we're going to wire up. Now this is an easy thing. We already have the two different options we can choose from. We could choose from the option where we're using the table occurrences and the relationships in order to go to the related found set. Or we could choose to use this option which is currently wired up to a script that is performing a find. Now here's the decision that we're going to have to make when we get to the user interface. Are we going to forego all of these table occurrences that are added right here which are only for two different features and opt for the find which the find only requires the one script it doesn't require these extra table occurrences likewise are we going to opt for because we're, we're given this option as well we solved this with the projects are we going to opt for the new FileMaker 16 card window which right there that dictates that you're only going to be, use, be using that option if you know that you are using FileMaker 16 with all of your clients if you're not using FileMaker 16, you're using FileMaker 14, you're forced to use the initial implementation we made with the popover right here. So we'll make those choices, but let's get rid of that, uh, that these load buttons, I should say. Now here's a cool thing that I want to point out when we go into layout mode. There is a particular layout part that is really useful when there are no records found. And what do I mean by no record founds? Let's go back into browse mode. We're selected on project four, which you can select on. Click load and there's nothing. We end up with a zero found set. Now let's take a look at our script really quickly. Our load script right here. And let's turn off the set error capture. I'm going to do that with a command slash or a control, control slash, which will turn that particular step into a comment. So now let's go back in. Well, we need to save it. Remember, we've got our little star right here. So nice little command S, we'll save that. We go over and we click load. And what happens is we get this dialogue that FileMaker throws up. We don't want to see FileMaker's dialogues necessarily, unless you like FileMaker's icons and the the lack of control that you have with these dialog boxes anytime that you're working within FileMaker and you want to prevent seeing these FileMaker dialog boxes, you have to assume control or assume responsibility, I should say. So in this case, what FileMaker has done is it's, it's telling you, hey, I want to be nice. You don't have any records. I'm going to put you back into the mode where you can continue this find. Well, when the user clicked this, this load button, they had no notion that they were performing a find. You knew as a developer you were doing that find. So that's where the set error capture comes on. So if you didn't know this, whenever you put set error capture on prior to a go to related records or a script that performs a find, it will show just a zero found set. Now that's not very nice. When we go into browse mode and we click load, the user sees pretty much nothing and maybe they'll select project three and they click load and they will see nothing. I prefer to use a particular layout part which is really pretty handy and we're gonna do a nice little trick here. We're going to go into layout mode 
and we are going to add a layout part. We're going to select this right here. It's the part tool. We're going to drag this out, and we're going to drag it out below. Uh, that I dragged it within the body. So because I did that, anytime you drag a layout part, depending on where you drop or release to have that part created, FileMaker presents only those options for that layout part being possible relative to the things where you dropped it around. So now I'm going to try that again, and I'm going to drag, this time I'm going to drag, you notice here I was within the body, here I'm within the footer. So now I get this nice part right here, trailing grand summary. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to say okay, and I'm going to select and drag that out and resize. Now I love trailing grand summaries on list views for a very good reason. It gives you the opportunity to present information when there's a zero found set. On a zero found set, the body part does not show, but other parts will show. So let's take a look. Go into browse mode. We can see that the trailing grand is already showing right here by virtue of the fact that the color is here. Well, let's add something that's a really nice user interface trick. We're going to go into layout mode. I'm going to select some uh, text. Actually, let's select a button. I'm going to select a button. And I'm going to say um, something to the effect of show all right here. And I'm going to select an action of a single step. And this, of course, can be a script to do whatever you want it to do. But I'm going to put a show all records just a single step, because we're not really into the scripting section yet. I will also add some text down in the bottom here that says something to the effect, if I drag this out, sorry, no found records, or whatever you want to put. Records. All right, and we'll leave that really messy right there. I'll, zoom, I'll make this a little bit bigger. And we will just go into browse mode. All right, so this is really cool. What happens is we see that when we select on project four and we click load, we get, sorry, no found records, and we get this show all button. Clicking on show all, of course, will now show all records. And of course, you can choose whatever you want that button to do. But here's the problem. Once we show all of these records, when we scroll down, we can see that this is still showing in the trailing grand summary. So now we want to electively decide when this does show, and we're going to do that with the hide calculation. Go into hide mode, or excuse me, into layout mode. We select this particular object, and this is so easy. It's a wonderful little trick. We're going to use our inspector, and we are going to go to the fourth area, our data tab, we are going to be using our hide object when, and we are going to hide this object when, and this is so easy, when get found count. That's it. That's all you have to do. Whenever there is a found count, that found count will return the number of records that there are in the found set. If there are no records found, then obviously it returns a zero. So we want to hide this when there is a found count, when there's not a found count, then it will simply show. And we can, of course, we can show this in find mode as well by checking that box if we want. Let's do the same thing for the show all. I love this trick. It is a wonderful little trick. Let's try it out. We go into browse mode. Let's scroll, look at that down there at the bottom. We have got a little area of text where we don't really have anything, but let me show you my additional trick that I like to add. So we've got the sorry no found records and the show all. Let's make another piece of text and just really take advantage of this trailing grand summary. Um, you've reached the end of the record set. So there we go. We haven't even gotten to the... Uh, to the whole reason why I'm, why I'm setting this up. We're going to take the found count off, uh, or we're gonna flip the logic on this one. On this one, we now, we don't wanna show you've reached the end of the record set when there is a found count. We want to hide that when there's not a get found count. So we wanna flip that one so that we go into browse mode and we scroll to the bottom. 
look at that. We get this nice, cool piece of text. You've reached the end of the record set. And you can really make this as decorative as you want in terms of how it looks. I'll show you in the user interface portion when, I, uh, when we get to that how you can make this look really cool. Otherwise, if I click Load, I am repurposing that. And of course, I can overlay those on top of each other. Sorry, no found records. But here is a pre presentation of what you can do. You can show all records, or of course, you can wire up whatever you want. So now that we've got that solved, we can make our selection of what's going to happen when we select on our object right here. Now remember, this particular field, as I go into define database, is stored within my globals. It's right there as the selected project. So there's really one thing that's pretty interesting about globals when it comes to script triggers. Now, as I zoom in here, there's a couple of ways that you can access script triggers. You can right click on the object that you want to add a script trigger, and you can choose from the option right here, set script triggers. Or my preferred method is if you hold down a modifier key, in this case, the command key on Macintosh or the control key on Windows, and simply double click, it will bring up specifically the set script triggers option. So here is where we get to set any of the number of script triggers that are possible. And we'll probably cover this much more in depth when we get into the scripting portion of this series, but never hurts to introduce it right now. So we have on object enter, on object keystroke, modify, validate, save, exit, um, panel switch, which only applies to um, sliders and to tab panels, and on object AV player change, which only applies to mobile devices, as far as I'm aware. So there's two different options when you're going to use a global field with a script trigger in terms of if it's formatted as a drop down menu. I think that's what we have. Let's take a look and double check. I'll move this over. And it is a pop up menu. I always miss those, mess those up. Drop down menu, pop up list, pop up menu, whatever. This is a pop up menu. Now this one option, the pop up menu, this is the default widget on FileMaker Go on iOS. So if you want to use the native widget where it brings up the little popover and you can flip and scroll, this is the one that you choose. The drop down list, remember that one always allows users to put in a custom option. The pop-up menu only allows you to select from the options that are possible in the value list. So when you make that particular selection for your uh, layout widget, what's really cool is that you get these two different options for the script triggers. The two options are this, and they're almost the same. The first one is on object modify. So obviously when you switch from one uh, option of a value to another value in this global field on object modify will trigger. But you can do other things with that as well. You can modify the what's in the field itself with a script by using a set field, say for example. Or in this particular case, you can use the on object save. Now I'm bringing this to your attention because using the on object save with a global doesn't have anything to do with when a record is committed. Meaning as soon as a value is changed in a global field, FileMaker considers that a save to the actual field. Whereas a save on a field is you have to get out of the field. In this case, we're not exiting the field. When we make a change to the field, FileMaker's natural, uh, or not natural, but its default behavior is to move from field to field to field and do that within the tab order, which we haven't even taken a look at yet. But when we make a selection on this popover, we're staying on the same field, but the save is happening and that's because it's a global. At least this is my understanding. So we'll choose to load this record right here. And we will say, okay, we're just choosing our find script currently. Now remember, we can change this load script, which is performing the find, that's without all of the extra table occurrences. We can switch it to use what this load does is using the go to related. And that's going to make be the decision that we need to make when we're talking about the user interface. But what I have now is I should have exactly what I want with regards to what is going to happen. I make my selection. And it performs that script. It uses my trailing grand summary. I can see, sorry, no records found. Here's your alternative option. You can show all or do whatever it is you choose to have them do. I'll have to think about what's best in the user interface here. But I select on project seven and it loads my project seven. So we are now starting to uh, basically declutter our user interface. 
And that is part of our goal with FileMaker database is we would be able to take this load button and this load button off of the user interface and really start to do our, our cleanup, the thing that we need to do. You know, it's interesting. For you, whatever it is that motivates you to keep moving your project forward or that makes you excited, decide it's sort of, I always think of it, it's like when, you know, some of us, whenever we're eating, we like to eat whatever we like the most last, and some of us like to eat whatever we like first. I don't know, maybe some people like to mix it in. For me, unless the user interface starts to get cleaned up at this stage, I really lose my motivation. So... I'm anxious to move to the user interface, but if the user interface doesn't uh, motivate you, then work on the structure, work on putting in all of the logic and whatever it is that motivates you to keep moving a project forward. And that's that was my point of saying that. So we've got our start, we've got our selection now, we've got our projects, which is going to, uh, we're going to have to work that into the user interface. But I think we've got a pretty good little lesson in today where we can make these selections. Now we still do have our issues where we, when we look at our projects, we're going to have to solve this. It's in our scripts, in our section or in our script up at the top of our to-dos. And it is this one right here, fix active versus non-active projects in the value list. And this is what I'm going to leave you with. I want you to try uh, start to solve this from a scripting standpoint, I will, maybe I'll solve it tomorrow uh, as our lesson. The problem being here is when we use our popover method and our popover comes up and we've given ourselves the ability to say whether a project is active or inactive, if I make this project three inactive right now, what happens is as soon as this closes, we get this ugly thing right here. So we are going to have to use a script trigger. We're going to have to start to do things in our user interface in order to clean this up. Because what we've done is we've said this value list should only list active projects. Because project three was no longer an active project, it was taken out of the value list, but yet the field contents still has the primary key of project three. So we need to solve this and I want you to think about how you might solve this, and we'll probably solve this tomorrow. What happens or what event can we use when we make this selection? And so let's turn project three back on, and I will exit this popover, and maybe you can think of how you might be able to solve making this act, uh, update so that uh, we get a cleaner user interface and we don't have that ugliness going on right there, just in case that the user does that within the user interface. So I think that's a pretty good amount of content for today. I've given you a great tip about the trailing grand summary, being able to hide objects within that, using it for the ability to present options to the user. We've looked at the on object save, talked about how that affects a global field as opposed to a regular field. The fact that you have those two options. We will go over more of the uh, script triggers. There are just so many things that you can do in the user interface in order to make your FileMaker solution work wonderfully cool. And that's what we're here to learn. That's what we are here for. So let's see if we have any questions that came in. We are going to switch over to the video chat and see if we got any questions today. I wonder if, there we go, there's the right uh, item. All right, we're missing another long day at the forum. The buenas, buenas tardes. Eh, hey, see. Si. Um, looks like we've got some chatter. You may need to refresh browser because Matt came out right here. All right, looks like we don't currently have any questions for today's particular lesson. So that's going to give us a quick wrap. You know, if you have any questions about FileMaker, things that you want to learn, um, of course, you can always check out my website over at FileMaker Magazine. Let's uh, load that one up here. You are always welcome to head over to FileMakerMagazine.com, a very reasonable subscription if you are interested in learning more. I provide a lot of technique files in depth. I talk about them and all of the different things you need to know. You're always welcome to go check those out. But also here on YouTube, there is a discussion section. When you go to my channel, if you click on the discussion, you can put a uh, question there and I'm able to respond there on YouTube or as always you can put comments in the uh, on the video that you're watching whichever video it is and I always try to get to those as quick as possible. So I think that's going to leave us with a wrap for today so let's 
wind things up. As always, here on YouTube, you can subscribe so easily by clicking on the little icon here and click the little bell if you want to be notified. And of course, the next video in this series is going to be coming up right here. So until next time, much luck with your own FileMaker development and happy FileMaking. See you later.